Good evening. A mother once approached Napoleon, a French general, emperor, seeking a pardon for her son. And the emperor replied that the young man had committed a certain offense twice, and justice demanded death. But I don't ask for justice, the mother explained. I plead for mercy. But your son does not deserve mercy, Napoleon replied. Sir, the woman cried, it would not be mercy if he deserved it. And mercy is all I ask. Well then, the emperor said, I will have mercy. And he spared the woman's son end of the story. Today, we read one of the most moving passages in the whole of the Gospels. A woman, a wife, who had been caught committing adultery is brought before Jesus so that he can be tested to see if he will do the right thing and follow the, the law of Moses and say he should be, she should be stoned. Jesus asks for the man who is not a sinner among the accusers, to begin the stoning. And the group melts away one by one, beginning with the elders. Take note. Why the elders? Hmm? Maybe the elders realize and recognize that they have so many faults. No? They cannot cast the stone, the first stone to the woman. And Jesus does not condemn the woman either for her conduct, but challenges her to begin life anew. This is a powerful story of justice and mercy, like in our story, you know, in the beginning. Jesus is on the side of the woman who has been accused of sin and crime. It was an unjust accusation, and the people who brought her had little good in mind and just why he, she was caught in the very act and where is the man here what an unfair justice system was it no are they observing double standards so it's really unfair and besides they were not really intent on learning from Jesus they were only trying to trap Jesus by their question so their disposition itself, the disposition itself, they're not ready to learn anything from the Lord. But even then, this became an occasion for Jesus to teach them on how he dealt with each one of us. No. This is the challenge Jesus puts to each Lent no. to begin life anew and let others begin life anew after they have hurt us let us reflect that we are all sinners and we are in need of God's mercy and we need to make fresh starts. Our first reading says, no need to recall the past is the jubilant cry from the prophet as he tells the people to look around them and discover that God is concerned with saving them as he was with saving their ancestors in Egypt. Do not let the past hold you back. Sometimes we have that understanding or thinking that because we have done something wrong in the past, we cannot move forward. We cannot move on. We are held back no, to move forward. But we are being invited to change perspective let us not allow the past no, to hold us back, but learn from that because we cannot really undo the past. No? And look forward to the future and allow God to do something new for us. And that's the message of Lent. No? We cannot change the past, but we can begin life anew and make our ending, the, the, the ending of our life with the Lord and with people around us, beautiful and wonderful. 
Paul too, in our second reading, even from his prison cell, is able to speak words that resound with hope. And this is because through Jesus, he has become aware of the presence of God with him in all the circumstances of his life, not only while he was outside the prison cell, but even if he was there suffering no? in prison. He can also say, I forget the past, because he knows that each new day offers an opportunity to come to know the love of God, a love which always triumphs over suffering and death. Paul changed not only his own perspective of life, but even in the way he values things. The value of St. Paul changed when he encountered the Lord. He said, no, I consider everything now as a loss compared to what I have gained in encountering the Lord. See, no, everything now is considered rubbish, compared to what I discovered with the Lord, with what He is giving me. That's, that's why I may lose everything, but many things in the world, but with the Lord, I gain everything. Because He is the one who is giving me all of these things I am enjoying. Like I said, though in prison, for many, it might be a depressing situation. Paul was hopeful and realized what is more valuable. Everything is a loss, a rubbish, compared to knowing and gaining everything when he encountered Jesus. In the gospel, we have this woman who also discovers that she can leave the past behind because the encounter with Christ has brought her to a new day. What a life-changing encounter that was with Jesus. How does this encounter tell us of our dealings with one another? Are there some things that need to be changed? As we draw close, close to Holy Week, we are now on the fifth Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll be entering Palm Sunday. We are invited to recognize that in the saving mystery of Easter, God is always doing a new thing. And how are we giving God that leeway or space to work something new in us and in our life? Remember that every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. All of us have the possibility of becoming a saint if we just allow the past not to if we just leave the past and not allow us to hold us down and allow the Lord to work into our lives and transform it, making us also like Him in our encounter with Him. Like we said, we cannot undo the past, but we can begin anew and let our encounter with Christ renew us. This is our prayer and our desire as we move on and enter into the season of the, into the holiest of week, next week, even as we also have tried to do some disciplines of Lent to prepare ourselves to go with Jesus, to journey with Jesus, not only on the road to Calvary, but also to share his new life gained for us in his passion, in his death, and in his resurrection. Amen.